Welcome back with another video on tryhackme.com. This is Ahinazi and we are doing CICD and build security on DevSecOps path. So today we're gonna tackle task 10 and the conclusion. Okay, uh, this is our last track. I, I hope this is our last task. So I already uh, started the attack box and I also already started the machine itself okay so let's get into it uh we can see that the ip addresses are pretty much the same right so i'm gonna open my trusted folder uh here because we saved all the commands here right so i'm gonna also open the terminal and open the Visual Studio Code here. Minimize this window. Minimize that one as well. These are all the commands at our disposal. Let's execute the first one. Because nothing has changed, everything is the same. So I'm gonna go to my attack box. I will zoom in, paste in the command. We are good to go. Now I need to navigate to this at least to make sure that it is working. I opened the Firefox. It's taking a lot, a lot of time. Okay. So let me paste here. But before that, I need to include HTTP colon forward slash forward slash and then this site will be accessible. Okay. Um, so we are using Anna Tacker as username. Anna Tacker. And password is P A W S W O R D 1 at sign. And I'll sign in i don't want to save it here okay so we are good to go let's go back to the task that we need to complete so it is task 10 securing the build secrets you can see the finish line in the in front of us of course man right our pipeline and build are almost secure one final step remains making sure that our build secrets are adequately protected Okay, one secret to rule them all. Okay, I mean, a secret wo hai, uh, I mean, itna wo, uh, highly uh, dependent hai system ke upar ke agar wo leak ho jai, to iska matlab hai aap aapki jitni bhi abhi tak aapne padi hain ki aap kaise build ko environment kaise secure karenge, aap build pipeline kaise karenge secure, build server, build process, build source code. In sab ki security jo hai wo basically uh, compromise ho jayegi, right so that's why they put it one secret to rule them all so let's see larry has now finished learned finally learned his lesson and made sure to implement segregated runners for the different environments but there is one more issue while these pipelines may be segregated we need to make sure that the secrets or variable as they are known in the cat lab are also segregated if the scope for secret is not narrowing, uh, de narrowly defined, we can request the use of broad secret in our dev build, allowing us to compromise the production environment one last time. Navigate to the last repo we use for this exploit, which is environment. I'll copy it and open it here. I'll close the other one. Okay, so this is the environment uh, repo and we are on the main branch. Okay, let's see what they are trying to say here. Uh, uh, let's take a look at the environment. Environments and latest build from them uh, as we have done in the previous task. Taking a look at one of the production deployments, we can see that the build is making use of an API underscore key variable. Okay, this is the API underscore key variable. 
all right and uh, it is writing into temp key right okay okay as anna we don't have uh, permissions required to list the different variables but taking a look at the dev branch ci file we can see that our dev variable is different okay the dev variable is different because it is api underscore key underscore dev right sure in our case the key uh, the value is api underscore key underscore dev let's make a change to this variable and also echo out the value to see if we can access the prod variable make the change to ci file in the dev branch and see what happens okay so uh, dev branch can the changes can so let's see how we can do that let's navigate to the dev branch here and i think we we can do a lot of <clears throat> uh is there any change much pending let's close this one before we do anything uh, because if we don't close it then there will be an error uh, i will close this merge all right so it is closed uh, i will go to manage uh where is the environments guys is it operate environments Uh, we have production or staging environment and that was the last build i think so that was executed and this is the file and okay so they change it to be writing the key to temp key file instead of just echoing out right i think we we, we need to do this okay okay uh so um let me go to the repository uh and then i'll go to the dev branch and then this one uh so in the dev branch we don't have much here so let's copy it from the other branches that we have for example main yeah so from main we can copy all of this copy and then if we go to dev uh, this is what we have here just a deploy so add it uh, i'll just paste here okay so i'll do one thing i will do one thing uh, let me put this key here and let's see if it will be printed out to us okay uh, once this is running so here on this uh, line 15 we we are echoing out it and writing it to the writing the output of it to the temp key and the in here uh why it is showing okay okay so now it is good uh testing yeah even uh we can use like this see they are using like this so if we are using like this that means the api key itself will uh be printed in the logs right so let's see if this will be done commit changes I'll put that just update, updated. Okay, create merge request. 
right. Uh, so the pipeline is already passed. Oh, it is very quick, man. Uh, this is test. Uh, the project name. Uh, okay, not this one. The other one. Deploy here. Yeah. Uh, the job is this job is creating a deployment to production. This will override the latest uh, deployment. Variable here require this job requires a manual action. The job does not start automatically, must be started manually. Uh, you can add CICD. Uh, but I have not executed one minute. Uh, we go to the dev pipeline, right? So, okay, let me merge it and let's see if uh, the job will run or not. Okay, now here. Is the pipeline? Uh, I'll run play play it. Now it is ending. Uh, yes. So we are able to print the key, which is this one, and we are good to go. <laughs> that was easy, man. That was easy. Okay, we can see that the dev branch is, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so let me paste this flag first and then we'll come back to the remaining portion. Awesome, we are on streak six. Awesome, awesome. So protecting the build secret, protecting build secrets, even when using GetLab CICD variables, it is crucial for maintaining the security of your pipelines. GetLab CICD provides a feature called Mask variables to help prevent secrets from being exposed in logs. Here's how you can use this feature masking variables. You can mask variables in your getlab.ci.yaml file by using the ca underscore job underscore token predefined variable. And this token is automatically set by GetLab and can be used to mask any variable value you want to keep hidden. For example, if you have a variable name my underscore secret, you can use it to uh, it like this. Echo my secret key, this will expose the secret. Echo mask CA underscore job underscore token, this will mask the secret. Uh, but it is again part of the uh, script. So if you know about the script, you can still change it, right? Use secure variables. If you want to store secrets securely in GetLab, you can use GetLab CICD variables with the mask option enabled. These variables are stored securely and are never exposed in the job logs. Ah, awesome. Even if you use them directly in your script to create a secure variable, go to the GetLab project, navigate to the CICD and uh, variables, add a new variable, select the mask checkbox and provide the value. Once you have added a secure variable, you can use it in your GetLab CI.yaml file without worrying about it being exposed in the logs. Uh, okay, so if we use a mask uh, variable, so that means uh, the value of this will not be exposed in the log. So they exactly know that how we needed to do this job. So we are able to do this. Ensure that your job script do not in advert in adver I mean, uh, do not advertise itself echo or print sensitive information. Even when using mass variables, double check your script to avoid unintentional exposure of secrets. So for example, if somebody can run a job like uh, we have an, an, an attacker could have run it, that means whatever you can place, uh, even the mask uh, variables, uh, if somebody can change something, we can, uh, we will be able to get the uh, values of the secret variable. So, 
it really depends upon the access control at the end. Limit the access to CSCD variables and logs. Only authorized can view job logs and variable in the GetLab. GetLab, you can configure project level and group level access controls to achieve this. Obviously, is using environment variables enough to protect the build secret? No, you need to mask it. So it is nay. Awesome. So we are on the last task. Okay, based on the attacks and misconfiguration we saw in the previous task, we can understand that pipeline security is a priority. Ensuring the security of your CI CD pipeline is crucial for safeguarding code and data integrity. Very true. Access controls are fundamental. Restricting access to critical branches and environments and CI CD variable is the first line of defense against unauthorized changes and data exposure. Runner security is essential, of course, properly uh, securing the machines running your GATLAB runner along with strong authentication is a must to prevent the breaches. Uh, we also need to isolate the environment, of course. Secret management matters safeguarding sensitive data such as API keys and password through GATLAB CICD variable with masking and securing. Secure variable is vital using environment variable is not enough isolate environments uh, separating development dev and production bro uh, broad environments minimize the risk of compromising the latter through the former sure continuous vigilance regularly reviewing access permissions scripts and securing configurations combined with monitoring and alerting ensuring ongoing security Definitely, education is key. Educating your team about security best practices is essential to maintaining a robust security posture. That is correct. I understand CSCD and build security. Of course, I do that. So, congratulations. We have finally, finally completed the room itself. So, our next room is dependency management. So, once you come back, we will start dependency management. So, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, Please subscribe, help us build this community, share it with other guys. So we have a, a very good DC community around cyber security. And I would also like to uh, uh, see your journey in the cyber security. So let's create our community and learn cyber security together. So this was a very quick video. Uh, we have finally come to the end of the room and once we come back we'll start dependency management so see you in the next video and bye bye